If stability is your thing, maybe this distribution will be to your liking. This Debian-based distribution features the Mate desktop. I'm looking at Point Linux right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Okay, let's begin. All right. Upon first glance, this looks like a classic desktop, circa a year and a half, two years ago in Linux. And that's namely because this is using the Mate desktop. And a lot of people like this over the changes that uh, GNOME brought to the table when they released uh, GNOME 3 or GNOME Shell. All right, so if you look on the lower right corner of your screen, you get four desktops to choose from. And then, of course, you also have an icon uh, to collapse all windows and show your desktop. On the upper right, you have a uh, logout configuration. You have the uh, calendar and the time, a battery indicator, internet connectivity, and, of course, a volume control. All right, in applications... Under Accessories, you get an Archive Manager, a Calculator, the Pluma Text Editor, a Root Terminal. You can search for files, take a screenshot if you're having any problems that you can uh, share. And then, of course, the Terminal. In Graphics, you get a Document Viewer, the Eye of Mate Image Viewer, LibreOffice Draw, and Simple Scan. In Internet, you get the Firefox Web Browser. Interesting to see how many of uh, these... Debian-based distributions are now shipping Firefox and Thunderbird, which is a good thing. You also get Pigeon Internet Messenger, Remina, which is for remote desktop, and, of course, Transmission. In Office, you get the full LibreOffice suite and a dictionary. In Sound and Video, Brazero for uh, making coffee coasters. I mean burning CDs or DVDs. And, of course, the VLC Media Player, which should cut up any video or audio file you throw at it, assuming you have all of the GStreamer, Good, Bad, and Ugly plugins uh, loaded into your system. In System Tools, you get a Configuration Editor, a Disk Usage Analyzer, a File Browser, the GDebi Package Installer, which makes it easier for you to install any dev package. Just double-click and it opens up like a regular executable installer would like it does in Windows. Well, kind of, sort of, maybe. All right, and you also have a Log File Viewer and a System Monitor. Quick a launch to all of your places is right here. In system, you have all the tools and your preferences here for uh, tweaking this to your liking. And then, of course, some administrative tools as well to get you going. Uh, uh, Gparted for managing your partitions, printing services. Your Synaptic Package Manager is located here for installing applications from Debian's repositories. An update manager, a USB startup disk creator. Great for those of you who want to burn an ISO image to a USB stick for uh, taking along with you and having Linux in your pocket for wherever you go. Okay, and then of course you can manage all of your users and groups here. Let's take a quick look at some of the things you can do to customize this. Okay, you can right click on your desktop and change desktop settings. And one of the things I really loved about GNOME was GNOME 2 is the fact that you could easily customize this and have a bunch of fun with changing colors and that sort of thing, which is something that really GNOME Shell is just lacking, and that was one of my favorite features uh, that it has. Now, this doesn't have very many wallpapers with this or many themes included, so you may want to hit DeviantArt.com or GNOMELOOK.org to download some themes that you can easily load into this. Okay, so just a few little images here. And then under theme, you have two choices. But let's go ahead and take the theme that we're running right now. We can customize this. Okay, so we can go into colors here, and maybe we want to change the background colors, maybe to match our desktop a little bit here. So I can open this up, maybe take the eyedropper, and maybe pick out this color that's on the title bar, and press OK. Well, now you can see that we have something that matches our uh, wallpaper a little bit better. Uh, so, and that's the cool thing. I mean, you can do all kinds of fun stuff with this. You can change your window border to something else that's more to your liking. Okay, and uh, there's a number of them to choose from. Some of them have different buttons, which is kind of cool. And, of course, 
You don't have to be stuck with this. You can download more of them online. Uh, so I'll, why don't I go with that dust blue? That looks kind of cool. And then, of course, uh, there's a number of icons that are included with this. You can go with the gnome icons, uh, high contrast, high contrast and burst, low contrast. So you can see there's a number of different little options here that you can play with. So if you were to decide, for instance, to do a dark uh, panel here, and maybe uh, darken up your theme, then you might want to use the bands of dark, which will make these icons appear, appear lighter so that you can see them better on a dark background. So, very nice. And I've just got to love it when a distribution is VirtualBox friendly. I did not even have to install this in VirtualBox before filming this presentation because this was actually able to run in VirtualBox at my native screen resolution. And I like it when that attention to detail is included because I want to be able to have the full experience without shutting down my computer, especially when I have plenty of resources that I can just push over to a virtual machine to test a distribution. So from what I can see right here, this is a really nice distribution that you can build on top of. Additionally, for those of you who like the eye candy, we all know that Compiz works very well with Mate. And interestingly enough, a little Google search online will reveal where you can get the Compiz Mate. Compiz 088 has been forked into a uh, new uh, package, if you will, that you can... Uh, install and to do this you would actually need to have a 64-bit installation and it gives you the instructions for adding the repositories in a Debian system so that you would be able to download these packages and install them no fuss no must and really be able to have a cool looking desktop but most importantly this distribution is with stability in mind so I wouldn't recommend really wrecking this thing up by enabling SID because you might get a little breakage. But if you're going to use this as a home office computer and you want something that's going to be hard as a rock, this is the one to get. Mm -hmm.